Hi, Phoenix Rising here, and today we're going to be doing Battle of the Budget Night Vision. What we have before us here is a Firefield NBRS 3x42 Gen 1 Night Vision Scope and a Photon RT 4.5x42 Digital Night Vision Rifle Scope. We're going to be going over features and specs on these, and then we're going to be going out and giving you some real-time, simultaneous video looking through the back end of both of these things to give you an idea of what you can expect for performance. So what I'm going to do is I'll post a link here to how far to jump ahead in the video if you just want to go and see what they, you can see out of these things. But we're going to be doing a fairly in-depth uh, review of the features and whatnot to, uh, before we get into that, just to tell you about these and tell you what I like and don't like. We're going to start off with the fire field. Firefield NVRS 3x42. This has a 3x magnification, 4x, or I mean 4x, 14 degree field of view up front, and is using a single Gen 1 image tube that has 30 line pair per millimeter resolution, which is a, a little less than half what a Gen 3 will have as far as fineness of detail. Uh, it has an 850 illuminator built into it that in, is just, it's weak, like most of them. Uh, most units that I've found for Gen 1 and digitals have very poor illumination uh, that doesn't bring the unit up to, to full potential, and that's the case as well on the fire field. Has simple controls, windage and elevation adjustments like a traditional scope, power switch that goes from off to on to on with your infrared illuminator powered up. It's just on or off. There's no variable power on your illuminator. And on the back end, you have a power light and an IR illumination on indicator light to let you know at a glance if the unit's on out in the field. You also have a reticle brightness adjustment. Uh, there is no brightness adjustment for output on this. It's based on how much light's coming in, amplified coming back out. So to give you a decent sight picture, you have the ability to adjust your reticle brightness. On the back end is your focus knob and it's in a good handy position. Uh, can't complain about that too much. Build-wise, it's very solid, but it does lack any Picatinny rails on it, which kind of sucks because the illuminator's not that good and you're gonna need to add another one. Does have a quick-release Picatinny rail mount on it. Uh, I do, do like the mount. It's three points of contact, fairly small grip on the uh, side that tightens up, but uh, you're not going to be mounting this on a 7 millimeter Magnum, so uh, so it's not bad for what it is. It also has the ability to easily adjust for different rifles without tools, which is a plus on, on that end. Power-wise, this thing's powered by two AA batteries, uh, accessible from this cap in the front, and although it's a little bit of a pain in the butt to change the batteries, you won't need to do that too often because if you just are running the unit without the illuminator, you're going to get 50 hours of runtime and 20 hours with the illuminator. So battery life is not an issue, and that's the case you'll find in just about any tra traditional night vision device. Now, uh, talking about the illuminator, like I said, you're going to want to get an extra illuminator to make this thing perform to its full potential. Uh, you can buy an Evolva or a Unique Fire Illuminator uh, on Amazon, eBay, for about $50 with the illuminator, an 18650 rechargeable battery, and a cheap charger to go with it, and another 10 or 15 for an offset mount. So you, you do have to buy some extra stuff to get this thing to perform. That being said, the base cost on this unit as of May of 2019 is about $270 on Amazon. Uh, I've seen it for around $300. I've seen it for a lot more than that, which I certainly wouldn't pay. Uh, so you figure about $270, get your illuminator, mounts for it, and you're looking at $350 to $400 if you get another battery charger and spare batteries for the illuminator, that sort of thing. So $350 with an illuminator as a, as a baseline, and that's what you're going to pay for this unit. Uh, base weight is 1.9 pounds, and if you add in the illuminator, batteries, all that kind of stuff, that bumps it up to about... 2.6 pounds of total weight for this unit. So that's the first option, the cheapest option, and that is the Firefield NVRS. 
Now let's talk about the photon. Uh, a lot more to go over on the photon than the fire field. This is a 4.5x uh, photon RT and this is the cheapest photon RT. There's four variants available. You have uh, this with the 850 illuminator. Add another $50 if you want to go with the 940 which is less visible, much less visible light to the naked eye, a little bit of reduced range. So if that's important to you, spend the extra 50 and go with the 940 illuminator. Then you also have the same, uh, same two illuminators available on a 6X at increasing levels of cost. Now this particular scope's 4.5X magnification, does have a 2X digital zoom on top of that, and it has a 22 degree field of view. Controls on it are relatively straightforward and simple. Uh, you have a focus knob up front that has a, it's kind of cumbersome to get to if you're using your right hand going around the illuminator, but it has uh, pretty good lugs on it so you can actually move it with one finger and, uh, and it works well. And you will be playing with the focusing knob a fair amount. Now, uh, on the back of your illuminator, you have a press a push button momentary here. That's going to start recording or stop recording because this does record uh, record video and it can also use this button press and hold to change between video or photo or reviewing your photos. So it's nice and handy to have a quick on off for your recording. Uh, you have a power button here, press and hold it for a second to turn a unit on. Press and hold for about three or four seconds, it'll do a little countdown on the display to power the unit off and it has a like a one second press with the unit on to turn your display off so that if you're out in the field uh, because this display is relatively bright it uh, you can turn off the display so you won't alert game animals or whatnot to your presence as much if you're not actually looking at the back of the scope and it also conserves a little bit of battery life on top you have your primary control which is this rotating knob with a press button push, momentary push button on the top and in use uh, with the scopes, when the scope's on, you're not in any menu. If you rotate the knob, it changes your screen brightness, which is very handy to have. Uh, a quick press brings up a quick menu that toggles with each press through brightness for your screen, turning your infrared illuminator on, and this does have 10 levels of power, 10, 10 power settings, 10 levels of brightness to your illuminator, and a lot of the time, you're not going to have to have the illuminator up on maximum uh, power so this allows you to adjust that there and the th third thing it cycles through is your digital zoom in, in in all cases when you're on that function you just rotate the knob to change them uh, your main menu is accessed by pressing and holding your top button for a few seconds and with that you can change your reticles and there are six available reticles with this unit and you can have four reticle colors which are black white red or green now uh, I talked about recording just a little bit this does 640 by 480 video and it does have a built-in microphone right here and the audio quality is actually pretty good it can take pictures at 1280 by 960 resolution <coughs> excuse me and it does have the ability supposedly to stream to your phone or tablet uh, allow you to change settings and stream live video now I've tried this with two different uh, Samsung phones, a Galaxy Note 4, and whatever the latest Galaxy Note is, and 8 or 9, I don't know. Uh, but anyway, with, uh, with the older Samsung using Android 6, I could see this, connect to it via Wi-Fi, change settings, but I couldn't stream video. Couldn't get that function to work. And with the newer Galaxy Note with Android 9 software, it recognized this as some entirely different device, couldn't change settings, and couldn't see anything. So if, you, if that's important to you, that's one of the things that are enticing you to buy this, I would recommend trying to find a review or a write-up from somebody who has this and what phone you're using to make sure that this stuff works with your device because it didn't work for me and I tried two different Android devices. So uh, that's not very impressive on that level. Now... Uh, this scope, like I said, it, it has a built-in illuminator. This illuminator kicks butt, okay? Best illuminator that I've seen on, as far as built-in illuminators on any Gen 1 or digital device that I've played with. Uh, with this, you can actually, uh, it's usable out to 200 yards and maybe even 300 pushing it depending on the circumstances. And there are some occasions where you won't need it, but very, very good built-in illuminator. 
you won't need to buy anything extra there. Uh, what it doesn't include is scope rings, okay? And this takes 30 millimeter rings, and from playing around with it, I have high mount scope rings on here, and that's what you're really going to need. I did mount this on an AR with mid mount rings, and I using a, a Magpul foregrip. I had maybe one or two millimeters of space underneath the front end of this, which I wasn't too pleased about, and the cheek weld was way too low to where you were having a hard time getting lined up on the scope. High rings are what you need, and they're not included. So cost on this unit is about uh, $435 right now on Amazon, base cost, not counting shipping, handling, and taxes. And by the time you add in rings, you can figure about roughly $460, okay? So $460 with everything you need. Now, battery life on this, because it's digital, is not good, okay? Digitals and thermals are battery hogs. So you're looking at three and a half hours of runtime, and that's with the illuminator on, according to Sightmark, and probably on low, but in many cases, that's all you're going to need. Now, what I will say Sightmark did very well is in their design for replacing the batteries. Right here is your battery compartment. If you flick this lever 90 degrees, pull it out, and you have a, mag a, mag a module with four batteries in it. And they give you a spare of these with a cloth carry bag, so you can have a spare in your pocket. Uh, and simply drop it in, push lock, and you're back in business. That is probably the best design for battery change outs that I've seen yet. Uh, I mentioned the focus in the front. You also have your focus adjustment for the screen in the rear on this. A uh, couple of other talking points. You got 2.6 inches between mounts with these 30 millimeter rings on here. And as you can see, this is a very long scope. So you, if you're looking at this in a specific rifle, analyze it, take a look at it, see if this is going to be readily mountable without adapters or if it's practical for your own use. Uh, this is solidly built. It's mostly plastic, but it feels good in the hands, has a good weight to it. It is a little bit heavy in the front, so keep that in mind. That's a little bit of a negative. And it's long. I mean, we're talking four grip long, or, you know, four, my half my arm length, so it's a kind of a bulky scope. But the weight's not too bad, largely due to the use of uh, polymer in it. Uh, now, this particular scope runs about 2.3 pounds with batteries in it and, uh, and, and rings on it. So that's not too bad at all. Now, uh, what else can I say here? Is there anything else that, uh, that I think is pertinent before we get on to the rest of this? Uh, maybe not. Software apps buggy. Illuminator's good. Well built, good image quality for uh, the specs, and that's pretty much it. Oh, it does have a, one other thing. It does have a built-in Picatinny rail, so you can mount another illuminator, although you probably wouldn't need to unless you just want to try and extend your battery life. Uh, you can also, there's a way to use a 30 millimeter ring and a small tube uh, cell phone backup battery, or power, power pack if you want to call it that, and run that to your USB and actually power this through that. Uh, I'm not going to go into that, but you can look on YouTube. There's a guy that shows you how to do that if you want to. And that's it. Uh, Sightmark Photon RT 4.5X Firefield NVRS 3X. Now let's go out to the range and take a look and see how well these perform. You might be surprised. Okay, we're back and we've got our 850 illuminator mounted and uh, right now it's off. So again, we're back to looking at just what we would see with the moon. Uh, moon's about, uh, I don't know, about a third of the way up in the sky now. You can see uh, with the photon, uh, again, we're in the shadow. We're looking at the shadow side of our targets. So uh, 
good lighting conditions, but we're looking at a, at a shadow area. Uh, so let's go ahead and turn on our 850 illuminator, and this is an aftermarket one uh, by Evolva. So I just turned it on, now the beam's focused and it's on low. Uh, this has three power settings, okay? And like I said, we're on low, so let's go ahead and cycle up uh, to, if I can find the button, there we go. There's medium. And there's this uh, 850 illuminator on high brightness. So, uh, again, with them, and this is a cheap aftermarket illuminator. This is like a T38, runs on an 18650 battery, and uh, and it's a $50 illuminator, okay? Uh, looking at it right now, at 100 yards, I would say we have a, a, a usable image on our NVRS. Now, going to the Photon, uh, it's bright as hell. I believe it's probably gaining down because of the extra illumination. I'm going to try to focus this a little bit better. Okay. So, uh, so there we go. Uh, that's with an aftermarket 850. So you can see, uh, right now, I don't see much of a comparison between the NVRS and the Photon, okay? Uh, it's just being 100% honest here. So let's go ahead, pan around a little bit, and there is our 200 yard target that I'm focused on. We'll hold there for a minute. I'm not really focused focused, but just to give you an idea of the view. And let's go ahead and swing over to the 300 yard target. Now you can see our illuminator, oops, if I can get this, I'm going to try and get this to where I can hands free it here kind of hard. I got a little bit of sponginess in my mount there. Okay, so here we are at 300 yards. Let me see if I can focus the photon. Okay, so photons in focus. NVRS, I don't think there's really anything to focus, so let me uh, try anyway. Nope, not really. So uh, again, you can't see anything really, even with an illuminator at 300 yards on this NVRS. Uh, Photon, I would say usable out to 300 yards. And while we're doing this, let's go ahead and do our digital zoom. And this is, again, this is a cheap illuminator, but it, it has the same power, I think, as like an Armacite or an ATN type illuminator. I'm going to see if I can focus this a little bit. Okay. And uh, so there you have it. I would say maybe not 300 yards so usable with the digital zoom, but now we'll go back to 200 yards with the photon. Kicking my butt trying to focus. Hey, you know what? Maybe I just need to turn the brightness down a little bit. I know, that's the bright. Oh, by the way, that's you can see the brightness actually gains down when I turn it up too much. So my glasses are kind of fogging up, and I don't have strong enough glasses for what I'm doing. I'm, I apologize. So anyway, uh, that's 200 yards, so, and I, I believe I still have the digital zoom on that, might be a little bit of it. Yeah, okay, that makes more sense. Okay, without the digital zoom, that's pretty usable at 200 yards with the Photon. Uh, not so usable with the NVRS. And now here we are at 100 yards. And uh, to me, the NVRS is, a, is basically a 100-yard night vision scope with a strong enough illuminator. Uh, whereas Photon is, gives you probably almost at least 50 yards greater, if not, if not double the reach.
So we'll go ahead and uh, again try and focus this in just a little bit. Uh, so there you have it. Uh, Photon RT 4.5X with an 850 illuminator and the same 850 illuminator being used on the Firefield NVRS. So I think that's uh, I think that says a lot. Well, I hope you enjoyed this comparison video. If you did, please like and subscribe to the channel. It uh, helps to motivate me to do a little bit more of this stuff for you. So I have a couple pictures here at the end. What you're looking at now is a Firefield NVRS with an Evolva T38 illuminator on an offset mount uh, mounted on your AR-15 flat top. And as you can see, you get a little tight for rail space and it's a little tough to get to the charging handle. And now we have the Photon RT mounted on the same rifle. And you can see how close it is to the foregrip. That is with the medium height rings. That's why I recommend a set of high mount rings. Uh, you can also see in this picture that your front focus ring is actually in a pretty good position for you to reach up and use your thumb to do the focus on the fly with the scope mounted on the rifle. So there you have it, Photon RT NVRS. Come back and see us.